Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. This is a T SQL tutorial titled Pivot Without Using Pivot. And in this demonstration, we're going to show you how you can perform a pivot operation without actually using the pivot operator. So we'll jump over to SQL Server Management Studio now and we'll go through an example of that. The prerequisite to this video is it does it does follow along from a previous video I've done recently which is pivoting made easy so I will leave a link to that video that helps us set up the data for this example and gets us to this point so that talks about how we can create pivot statements uh, and this on screen here is the pivot statement that we created uh, in the previous video I'm going to use this as an example and what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to turn on the actual execution plan so I'm just making sure that that is on within my query so I go to query at the top and press include actual execution plan or as a keyboard shortcut you can also press control and M what we're going to do next is just go ahead and execute this query. Now we can see in our results we've got some figures for a small amount of location and a small amount of, of years. Uh, but what we're paying particular interest to is the execution plan. So if we open up that window we can see we do have a table scan. It is stored as a heap at the moment which is, is not ideal but is, is fine for this demonstration. Um, so we're doing a table scan to return the data. It's being sorted because we're using a grouping operation. Uh, the compute scalar operation uh, actually relates to extracting the year from date. But what we want to pay particular attention to is this stream aggregate operation. It's probably also worth mentioning that I am using SQL Server 2017 uh, in this video. So you might see uh, a slightly different uh, execution plan depending on the version of SQL Server you are using. It shouldn't be that different because there's been there hasn't been many massive changes um, to the query optimizer or the database engine for quite some time. But I'm going to have a look at this stream aggregate operator and we can see on screen it shows us various information about that. But what's of particular interest is if I right click and select properties, over on the right hand side it will open up more information for me. I'm just going to have a look at the defined values. So this is where SQL Server is effectively computing expressions for us. These are the actual operations that are taking place. And if I have a look at the different expressions that are being calculated, I can see that expression 1003 that you'll see on screen represents the year part of our, our date so that's the previous compute scalar operation um, but what, what I'm paying particular attention to is how this pivot operation is actually executed so hopefully you can see that on screen that it's actually breaking it down into case expressions so it's saying when the when the year equals 2018 then use the amount and that's wrapped within a sum as well this count big operation that we can also see so we can also see this is happening twice uh, I believe that's just being computed to understand the amount of rows so it's just performing count operations on each of the values so it can compute the correct amount of rows but what we're particularly interested in is the sum that it's actually computing so that got me thinking if when we write out a pivot operation uh, I will just hide that for now so I'm just going to close the properties window and hide uh, the execution plan so that got me thinking when we actually write out our pivot operation internally SQL Server is converting that to a case, op a case um, statement 
So we can have a go at writing this out ourselves as a case statement and that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So we're effectively going to be achieving the same thing uh, but using case statements instead. Now it's important to note that this doesn't mean that you should never use the pivot operation. Uh, the pivot operation is beneficial. We can clearly see when we use pivot exactly what we want to do with the data. So if somebody else comes along and reads this query they understand exactly we're looking to perform a pivot operation. And as we'll see shortly when we look at case statements that's not so clear. Uh, they do become a bit verbose. They're not as, as straightforward as pivot operations. Um, but the benefit of using case statements we will see shortly. So I'm going, going to go, go ahead onto a, a new query, new window. query window and then we're going to select again we'll just select all our data to start with as a starting point. So we can see we have our locations, our dates and our amounts. I'm just going to turn off the actual execution plan in this window. So we're going to start writing out our columns. So if I select location, again we're going to be extracting the year from our date column. And the reason I have year and date within square brackets or braces is simply because they are reserved keywords in SQL Server and amount. So this would be our starting point for our, our pivot operation. Um, but we're not going to use the pivot operation here. We're going to see if we can achieve the same within case statements. So what we do want to achieve is the sum of the amount. However, uh, we still have our grouping column, so we have to apply grouping to this query. So we're going to be grouping by location. And now we're going to write out each of our individual case statements. So what we're going to say is we're going to create a case statement and say when year date equals 2017 then amount end as 2017 and again we put 2017 within square brackets because it's a numeric value so we have to indicate that that's what we actually want the column called so what we're saying here is when the year extracted from the date equals 2017 then amount and we're going to wrap that within sum so we're just going to put sum around our case expression so we're just going to close that off after end so if we go ahead and execute that now we can see we're starting to build our, our pivot so we've created a new column called 2017 and we're summing the values only when the year extracted from the date column equals 2017 we're summing the amounts. So now we'll go ahead and build our other columns and in this case all we can simply do is copy and paste this. We know we have four values for year so we're just going to paste that four times and we're just going to change these values just to save me writing it out. So hopefully this is beginning to take shape now that we can use case statements to perform the pivot operation but the one disadvantage you'll see straight away is it's not actually clear what we're going to do. I think for me uh, when I look at the pivot statement I instantly know what we're trying to do whereas here I need to take a second glance into the detail to see exactly what we're trying to achieve. So if I go ahead and execute that now we can see as before with our pivot operation we have got nulls so within our we're saying case when year extracted from the date equals a certain value then amount end so we're not indicating to SQL Server to add those nulls but because we're not adding an alternative within the case statements that null value is automatically added for us 
So what we've got here is an example of how to perform a pivot operation without using the pivot syntax. And this is what SQL Server will internally convert our pivot syntax to. However, there is a major advantage of this approach. And that is if we want to apply multiple different aggregations to the data. So if I wanted to see a sum of amount and an average and a maximum, then I couldn't use a pivot operation. I couldn't use one single pivot operation. I could use multiple and join them together, but then our code will become quite complex, whereas this is probably the better alternative in that situation. So if we're just performing a simple pivot where we're applying just one aggregation, then pivot will be the best choice to indicate to everyone exactly what we're trying to do. If we want to apply multiple different aggregations in different columns that we'll go through now, then this might be the better solution. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a different aggregation. And again, it's just a simple copy and paste operation. So I'm going to copy all of those values, Put a, make sure all my commas are in. And instead of sum, I'm going to change all of these values to average. Now the only thing I also need to change is the column name. So I'm just going to change these to the value of sum followed by the year. And I'm going to do the same with the average columns underneath. And if I go ahead and execute that query now, we can see we now have a pivot where the first four columns represent the sums for the year but then we've also managed to include the averages for those years in those locations as well, so the average amounts. And we can go one step further by adding even more aggregation. So let's say we wanted to add a max as well. So I'll just paste that in there. Let's copy the indentation that I'm just going to take out. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is just to simply find and replace. So if I press Control H, we want to replace any time the average is mentioned with max, and we'll replace all of those eight values. I would have liked it in capitals, but never mind. So if I go ahead and execute that, we've now got 12 new columns where we can see the sum for each year, the average for each year, and the maximum value for each year as well. So I'll just zoom in on those sums. So you can see those pretty clearly of what we're trying to do there. So just to recap, the case expression checks when the year date value equals the certain year. If it does, then it takes the amount. If not, then it's nullified. Uh, and then we can apply other aggregate functions as well. So it is quite clean and it's quite quick to do because it just involves simply copy and paste operations and replacing those values with the aggregate function uh, and different column names. So it's quite a simple process to follow. And if we go ahead and last of all add the execution plan again we should see a very similar execution plan to what we had initially. So yes, again, we'll still have the table scan and the sort, the expensive operations that would be less than ideal in production. Um, but we still have the compute scalar value where it's extracting the year from the date. Uh, and then we still have our stream aggregations, which in this case will be probably a lot more due to the amount of Yes, so we've got our max operations, we've got our count operations, we've got our sum operations. So we're using count and sum. Um, so again, internally, SQL Server will convert average to a sum over the count. So that's why those two operations are showing there. Really hope you have enjoyed that video. That was a good alternative to using the pivot syntax and the benefit of using 
that over the original pivot is that we can add multiple aggregations and we also learned that pivot is internally converted as well. Uh, question to finish on, what is the alternative to using pivot that we've just shown within that video? Put the answers in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, please do hit the like button. If you didn't, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to address any issues. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching.